<laughs> but I'm gonna, I'm gonna clue you in, guys. I've been saying this for 20 years. For, for women, sex is mental. If you wanna get into our bed, you gotta get into our head. You've gotta talk nice. You've gotta make us feel safe and important. That is, f I'll get there. <laughs> you, it, that, uh, that's foreplay, if you make a woman feel safe and important. You don't even have to really be listening to her when she's talking. Just look in her face and when her lips stop moving, go, uh-huh, like that, that's all you have to do. No, really. We just wanna know you're with us. We just wanna know, she's petting Eddie. See, see, honey, see, it's all true. It's not just me. It's true, Eddie. That's, it's mental for us. And that's why age appropriate is difficult. Because I, I, I met this young man a few years back, and, and, you know, and I, I said, where do you live? He said, I, I live on a sailboat in Marina Del Rey. Well, that's pretty sexy. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that's adventuresome. That's cool. All right, little dude, you passed test one. Cool. I said, uh, wow, you live on a sailboat. That's like Sonny Crockett. And he was like, who the hell's Sonny Crockett? <laughs> what? You've never heard of Miami Vice? What are you, an idiot? <laughs> Miami Vice is, it's part of pop culture. That's a, Don Johnson in the 80s was so hot, he couldn't even wear socks. He was so hot, he, he couldn't wear socks, Lacey. There was smoke coming off his ankles. He was so hot, Lacey. You've never heard of Miami Vice either, have you? Okay, no. Okay, Lacey, I'm gonna jump in the Wayback Machine. All right, Lacey? Back in the day, when I was a little girl like you, Lacey, actually before that, in my, in my late teens, early 20s, we actually had to watch TV on TV. It was, it was craziness. There was no binge watching. You didn't know what was gonna happen next week. You couldn't jump ahead or look it up on the internet machine. You had to sit on the couch. You had to have your tukus on the naga hide. And I lived with my grandma, Josephine, and me and my grandma Josephine, that's what Latinos do when we're heartbroken, we move back in with our family. <laughs> and, we, and me and my grandma would watch Miami Vice. Nothing moved in Miami on Fridays between nine and 10 o'clock and we would be sitting there. And this is the innocent world that we lived in. This is the innocent world. The show was an amazing show. Sonny Crockett had a partner, Ricardo Tubbs. And Ricardo Tubbs never got the chick. He just didn't, Sonny did, it was the 80s. Until one time, 1985, April, about 9.47. <laughs> Leslie, I remember it like it was yesterday. While Foreigner was singing, I wanna know what love is. Remember that? <laughs> Ricardo Tubbs rolled over and it made it past the censors. His whole big butt right there, bam, cracking all right there, bam. And I was sitting with my grandma, we're like, Ooh. <laughs> Can you imagine getting that excited over butt crack? <laughs> we were stoked. My grandmother's like, Dios mio, we've been mooned. <laughs> I'm like, Grandma, he's black. It was more like an eclipse, but... <laughs> but that's the world we lived in, that that was news. Like, you waited for the show to end Woo! so you could go in the kitchen and call your friend on the phone that was connected to the wall by a wire. <laughs> It wasn't like you could just text her, did you just see Ricardo Tubbs' hot ass? You couldn't do that. We had to wait, you know? And I'm gonna tell you a piece of trivia. If you did not see Ricardo Tubbs' ass in April of 1985, Lacey, you didn't, that's exactly right. It didn't make it to the summer reruns. I waited. Uh, me and my grandma, we were reading the TV guide to see when that episode was gonna, that's a book that you used to have on your coffee table. I, uh, I don't care. No, you do, you miss things. You miss things. I, I, I miss men, I miss, I miss deferred gratification. I, I miss deferred gratification. Do you, do you know what that is, Lacey? <laughs> deferred gratification is, uh, and she said yes, to her credit, she said yes, but for some of you in the back that aren't in the front row that are like, I don't know what the hell that is. That's a, that's a lot of syllables for a Wednesday. I, uh, <laughs> Deferred gratification is when you really, really want something and you just can't have it right away. You just can't. What's your name, pretty girl? Signy. Signy. That's very unusual, Signy. Signy, I know you know what deferred gratification is. Of course. You were like, are you kidding me? I, uh, I can see, I've seen Patiko right here. 
But 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 here's the thing. The first we used to have layaway. Do you have any idea what layaway is, Lacey? No, I knew you wouldn't know that. That's that is where Chris Chris is laughing because he was like, I remember when my mom would drag us to Kmart. I have <laughs> But you would, you would pick out some goofy outfit that you thought you were beautiful in. And you would walk to the back of the store and there was a window and there was a woman with a name like Madge, you know, Joan. And you would give her your stuff and she'd put it in a box with your name on it, with like a little ledger. And then you would babysit the bratty, just insufferable child down the street, like $2 an hour and all the food and booze you could handle. But... Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and then you would go back and you would give her the money and you would eventually get the clothes out. And by then they were out of style, usually, Lacey. <laughs> but you were proud, Signe said it's true. It's all true, Signe, all of it. Yeah, but you were excited because you paid for it with your own money. See, in a world we live in now, if there's something you like, even just a song, you're walking past someplace, you hear a song you like, you take your phone out, you shazam it, you hit three <laughs> buttons, and you're like, oh, yeah, that's closer by the chain smokers. Got it, I'm in, I'm good, right? That's a song, Signe. And, uh, <laughs> and you're excited, you know? When I was a little girl, Lacey, younger than you, if you had a song that you loved, here's how you went about getting it if you didn't have money, okay? Hang on. You would, you, would, you would listen to FM radio. You'd be excited because your song was in heavy rotation, right? You were stoked. And, you, and you, you had a radio with a dial, and it didn't pick up signal in every room, so sometimes you'd have to have it like in the kitchen by a window, and you'd have it turned up pretty loud so you could hear your jam in the living room, and you were like one ear. And then the DJ would say, like, coming up next, Salisbury Hill by Peter Gabriel. And you would be like, that's my jam. Yeah, okay, I'm with you. Be like, yeah. And you would be praying that he wouldn't talk over the ramp of the song, over the front part. And then, and then he, and then, yeah, that you would get a clean record. And you would wait. You would hover. You would go in the room and you would grab your little recorder and you'd put it in front of the speaker, fingers crossed, praying. And you'd stand there. The commercial would end clean break. You'd hear climbing up on, and you would die. Bam, boom. And you would have to hit two buttons simultaneously, Lacey. You would have to hit the red record and the play at the same time to get a clean record. And it was like catching lightning in a bottle. You had your jam. And you'd rewind, rewind, rewind. My heart going boom, boom. You were so excited. Yeah, you were happy. And then, and then you would do that 10 or 12 more times. And then if you came from a good family, like my girlfriend Claudia, you would go to Radio Shack and you would have the tape to tape recorder, right? Where you could make dubs for your friends. And we didn't have emoji, Signy. We had stickers and Sharpies and imaginations, Lacey. And you would make tapes for people you loved, and it meant so much because they know what you went through to put it together. Even if you were rich and had 45s, it still took time. I still have a box of mixtapes, and my favorite has Jungle Love by Steve Miller. And there's something very sentimental and exciting about having to wait for something and then getting it. There's something that really fills your soul. That's why I don't care that I haven't met my soulmate yet, you know? When I go to the gym, I go to the gym for me, but there's a little part of me that says, if I meet him, I want to be in good enough shape to throw him down. <laughs> yeah, I do, I, I do. It's funny, because when I shower, sometimes I grab my own butt to see what I'd feel like to someone. But here's the weird part. You, you, oh, like I'm the only person that does that. Everybody does that. And don't you hate it when somebody comes up and touches you on the back of the arm without warning? Like, don't touch me on a soft, unflexed piece. Don't, don't, yeah. Yeah, don't. Yeah. But the thing is, you'll never really know what you feel like to another person because you can't sneak up on you and grab a bad spot. You usually usually flex and grab a good spot, you know? But, but, but it, doesn't, it doesn't, here's the funny part. 
That's the beauty of being an older woman is that I realize men don't care. They don't really care if you're flexed or you're tight or you're perfect. They really don't. Uh, they just want you there, you know. And uh, I, I used to read these magazines when I was a little girl. My mother would get Cosmo. I thought Helen Gurley Brown was the smartest woman on the planet. Every month, Cosmo magazine, how to get a man, what to do with him once you're done. You know what I mean? Like, like <laughs> I'm serious. Every month. The bedroom trick that drives him wild. <laughs> you know the bedroom trick that drives him wild? Show up. 